At Mitt Sperling, I'm the Editor-in-Chief of System Level Design. I'm here with Grant Pierce, the President and CEO of Sonics. Grant, we've heard a lot about 3D, 2.5D stacking. How real is it at this point, and what does it mean for the industry? 3D technology is very real already on the memory side uh, with uh, stack die for uh, DRAM. Uh, where we're seeing it emerge now is on the, the logic side for SOCs. And there, it's a new technology. Uh, it needs a driver in terms of market volume. Probably a mobile market volume is what's needed to really uh, drive this technology to stable standard, uh, reliable packaging, and then low cost. So reliable yields and then low cost. Um, it does change the equation. The reason to do 3D stacking is to improve power and bandwidth for logic chips, for the SOCs. If that improved bandwidth and lower power, though, is not translated to a positive user experience, then it won't be valued in the market. So what do we need in the ecosystem then for IP is a way to assure the customer assure that end user that he will see a better experience, a more responsive product. And to do that, we need an on-chip in the SOC utilization of all of this improved uh, bandwidth. Dealing with 2.5D and 3D, we're dealing with some very complex technology, not all of which typically has gone together very easily in the past. Where do you see the bottlenecks and how easy it will it be to resolve them? All of the SOCs are remarkably, you know, continuing to move forward in complexity. Uh, we see routinely now designs at 40 to 100 million transistors. We're seeing hundreds of IP cores integrated into single chips. This creates a demand for bandwidth. The, the, the means to improve on-chip bandwidth then demands things like technologies like wide I.O., Wide I.O. improves the, uh, the bandwidth to memory, uh, actually demanding uh, multiple channels of memory to be supported for multiple heterogeneous processors to access that memory. So what we need are solutions that enable maximum bandwidth for these new emerging technologies like Wide I.O. And, and that is where the, uh, the opportunity lies in SOC design. And that I.O. is not just to memory, right? It could be to uh, the cloud. It could be a connection to almost anywhere. Uh, well, clearly, the, the kinds of applications that are driving that demand for bandwidth uh, relate to video uh, with the uh, progression of uh, uh, pixel counts in the, uh, the resolutions. Um, it certainly relates to the level of graphics that's being supported as well as video simultaneously in these advanced SOC designs. Uh, clearly, though, it, it, it all relates back to the amount of data that our, our uh, systems are capturing and storing. What are the bottlenecks? Is it bandwidth or is it power? Well, of those two bottlenecks, I would clearly put power at the top of the list. Um, what we need is to be able to, to move data for a more and more efficient use of power. Um, the data requirement at the same time is growing, uh, but the power budget has been uh, really pushed to the edge for quite some time. And what we need is to be able to see lower and lower power for more and more bandwidth. And, and there lies the, uh, the opportunity as we look forward uh, in the IP market in the SOC market, in the ecosystem for these uh, uh, very attractive products, system products. The ecosystem is, is somewhat disaggregated at this point. How do we make it all work together? We need improved alignment uh, between the SOC fabricator and the memory fabricator. Um, when we bring these two very different products from very different manufacturing fabs, together into one package, um, it's, it's well understood how to succeed with 3D stacked packaging on the memory side. Um, it's going to be up to the SOC designer 
uh, to understand how to integrate those stacked memory parts together with his SOC. And for that, uh, we'll need to have uh, a strong standard uh, to enable the two separate process technologies to converge at literally at the physical connection of wide I.O. Um, we'll need to see that we have the volumes necessary to drive this manufacturing process on the packaging side in order to give us reliability, uh, high yield, and low cost. What becomes the glue for all the different buses out there? We've got the AMBA bus from ARM. We have the Intel IOSF. How does all that come together, and, and what holds it together? Well, so in, the, uh, uh, in, a, in a complex SOC design, uh, we already have conditions where we're supporting multiple interfaces. So when we talk about buses today, mostly what we're referring to is the protocol that is present at the edge of the processor or other blocks in the design. Now, some of those protocols uh, can be uh, very good for interconnecting uh, parts that are, for example, closely related in how they were designed or where they were designed. So a collection of proprietary parts within one company you know, might be well supported by a proprietary interface. So IOSF is a proprietary interface internal to Intel used for a lot of Intel's internal blocks. Uh, on the other hand, SOCs are requiring blocks to come from multiple sources. We're, we're well beyond the day where within a single SOC there is only one supplier of the uh, integrated IP. So where network on chip technology comes in, where Sonics makes its business, is in its ability to bridge through all of the different protocols, have those converge onto an interconnect that will efficiently move all of that data within the SOC and bridge those differences. What are the main drivers behind all of this? Why are we heading in this direction? Uh, well, so actually what we're beginning to see finally is that uh, system on chip is becoming more and more the challenge of addressing the system requirement. So 15 years ago, flashing back, we looked at SOC designs as a collection of about 100,000 gates. It had a, an embedded controller. Um, and we worried a lot about the hookup of the different blocks together. So just physically making the connections and seeing the chip work was the great challenge. Um, today, what we see is that we're dealing with uh, heterogeneous multiprocessor designs uh, we're dealing with transistor counts upwards of 100 million. We're looking at hundreds of IP cores on a chip. What means a lot today is the ability of all of these different IP cores to interoperate, achieve performance, um, and, and be highly verifiable, easily verifiable, uh, if you will, so that we can get designs done very quickly. Now we look forward. Uh, looking forward, SOCs have to be more of a system level solution for software. So what comes into play is that we're not building application specific chips anymore. We're building software specific integrated circuits, SSICs. Uh, these are chips that have to run an application store worth of software. And when the software comes into play, now we see the importance emerge for how the bandwidth of the system that's made up of the memory plus the logic processing uh, becomes paramount. Here's where we can really control the user experience, uh, improve battery life, uh, and we can uh, create a, an overall improvement of the user experience for the, for the end customer. It sounds like we're, what we're getting into is a much more rational use of the components on a chip. So you only use as much processing power as you actually need. You only use as much memory as you actually need. What does this mean for the industry? That's correct. I, I think what we're seeing is that now, uh, with more respect to this, the overall system level requirements, uh, it changes these relationships within the IP ecosystem, within 
the relationship of the memory fab and the, and the actual SOC fab, uh, complements that we need through these wide I.O. connections, um, and then the, uh, the inevitable convergence in the marketplace on platforms that can enable different types of hardware solutions that can still run a common uh, base of software. So I need to support the App Store, even though I may use uh, that software on my phone, on my tablet, even on my PC. Grant Pierce, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.